Hello, welcome to this last video in the series on the cross product. Uh, we're going to look at a couple more applications. Uh, this one will look at a physics application and also just uh, the idea of being being able to look at the standard basis vectors and use them to help you figure out the cross product. Remember the standard basis vectors? They are i, j, and k. One along the x axis is i, one along the j axis is one along the y-axis is j, and one along the z-axis is k. These vectors, can we can take the cross product amongst these vectors. Now remember, when you do the cross product, you get a third vector who was orthogonal to both of the original two. In fact, when you have an orthogonal set like this, three different vectors that form what is like the framework of three space here, then when you cross one with the other, you'll get the third. Or perhaps the third pointing in the opposite direction. If I cross I and J, I should get K. If I cross J and I, no, no. If I cross J and K, I'll get I. If I cross K and I, I'll get J. Now a nice way to represent that would be to use what I call a wheel. We have um, I, J, and K, and then uh, clockwise arrows. Whenever you cross two, you'll get the third in that order. If you cross in opposite order, you should get the opposite sign. If you were to cross J and I, maybe even do it with using the right-hand rule, you'll see that what you get out is negative K. If you cross K and J, you'll get negative I out. And if you cross I and K in that order, you'll get negative J out. And so we can actually use this to help us figure out the cross product. Here are um, two vectors. We have I plus J and I minus J. Now these vectors are in 2D. These vectors are in the in the, um, the XY plane. We had said that... Um, the cross product needs to be in 3D. So what we're going to consider then is the third component being zero. But any two vectors that are in the XY plane, when you cross them, you'll get something that is either going to be K or minus K or some multiple of that. And so you have the vector I plus J and we're crossing the vector I minus J. And let's see how that works. And our job is to try to do it without determinants just using the properties of cross product. And so we're going to start off with the foil. I cross I, I cross minus J, J cross I, J cross minus J. Anytime you cross a vector with itself, guaranteed to be zero. So two of these guys go away, zero for I cross I. And then when it comes to J cross minus J, you'll also get zero. You could pull out the negative and have it as J cross J, or um, one of the properties, if you cross a vector with a scalar multiple of itself, you'll get zero. Then we have these two middle terms. When you have any kind of constant, you can pull that constant out. So in the second term, when we have I cross minus J, we pull the negative one out, and it's the opposite of I cross J. And then using the will, we can figure out I cross J is K, while J cross I is going against the will. That's going to be a negative K. Therefore, the final answer, negative 2K. When you cross I plus J with I minus J, you get negative 2K. All right. The uh, common application in physics is to uh, that, that employs the cross product is torque. Torque is this measurement of of uh, twisting power, the tendency of some body to rotate about an origin. Um, we have a wrench as our main um, object here that's going to help us figure out the twisting measurement called torque. So the turning is happening at the point P. We are applying some force, 
not at P, someplace removed away from P, that force then causes the twisting. And the question is twisting in or twisting out. Righty, tidy, lefty, loosey. <laughs> but um, we want to know the strength. You know, the stronger the force, the stronger the twisting. We want to be able to measure that torque. The the distance, you know, you, you don't apply the force at the point P. You, you displace that and apply it someplace else at some point we call Q here. So then there's a vector called R, which is the displacement. And so the torque is going to measure the tendency of the body to rotate about that point P. The Greek letter tau is used for torque. And it is exactly, the, it's a vector. And we want the magnitude of that vector. The vector tau for torque is the cross product between the R and F vectors. The magnitude of the torque is be the magnitude of the cross product. And we know how to find the magnitude of the cross product. In the previous video, we said that it is the product of the magnitudes times the sine of the angle between them. But you got to be careful with this angle between them. What does that mean? So when you have two vectors, regardless of this application, the angle between the vectors is what you get by putting their initial points on top of each other um, using parallelogram and um, parallel lines and transversals. You can get the same angle by putting their terminal points on top of each other as well. But um, generally, though, by the way, these vectors are drawn. R goes from P to Q. And so right now in the picture for the wrench there, the drawing has the initial point of F on the terminal point of R. That's not the angle that's between those two vectors there, the, uh, the acute angle there that's shown. The obtuse angle is the one that's going to be between the two vectors. Just imagine sliding the initial point of R down to the initial point of F. That's how you're going to end up with the angle theta. All right, quick little question here. I'm going to apply a 30 pound force on the same rigid system here and um, I want to calculate the torque in foot pounds. If you applied the force eight inches away from the turning point, formula from the other slide, three guys to multiply. For sure, we have the magnitude of the force is 30 pounds. What we need is this vector R, which represents the displacement. We're told that the distance between the two points is 8 inches. So that's the magnitude of that vector. But the units are off. The answer should be in foot pounds. We're in inches, inches, feet. We have to reconcile that. So we have to convert into feet. Okay, uh, 12 inches in one foot, like a chemistry cancellation problem. Eight inches represents two thirds of a foot. So we have the magnitude of R, which is two thirds. We have the magnitude of F, which is 30. All we need to figure out is the sine of theta. We're given an angle and told um, that that angle is 135 degrees. But it's not, it's, it's off, right? It, we don't have the initial points on the top of each other. Let's take F and slide it down so that it's touching the initial, the initial point of F and the initial point of R on top of each other. And yes, you do end up with that same 135 degrees using parallel lines. So uh, if you're into radians, uh, that represents 3 pi over 4. What's the sign of that? You're like 45, that's in the second quadrant. The sign of it is positive while the cosine of it's negative. It, it's root two over two. You have all the three elements you need. You know the magnitude of R, you know the magnitude of F, and you even know the sign of the angle between them. So you're ready to answer this, cancel the twos. Three turns the 30 into a 10. 10 root two foot pounds. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. My name is Nakaya Remmer. I'm helping you through this journey. Please like and subscribe. Comment down below if you have any questions. 
I will see you in the next video.